the last video, we talked about different ways that you can capture time-lapse footage. And if for some reason you missed that video, I will link it up in the description. In this video, I wanna talk about how we're going to use editing software to stitch that together. And we're gonna start in Lightroom. Now, in Lightroom, I have already imported my images, and I didn't mention this in the last video, but I like to shoot raw format when I can. We're gonna export this as a JPEG sequence, but I have a little more control over the edit of the actual sequence if I shoot in raw. And so I know it takes up more space, but I will go ahead and start there. The first thing I would do is once you've imported all of your images is under sort here, just make sure it's sorted by file name because the file names are numbered and you want to look at this, you know, in order if you can. And so I will scroll down to the middle of the sequence and I will pick an image. And what I will do is I'll hit D on the keyboard. This will take me into the develop mode. And this is where I'm going to make my adjustments. Now this is a little bit unconventional for a time lapse. This is one I shot really early this morning at about six o'clock when the sun was coming up. So the exposure in this time lapse actually changes over the course of the sequence. So I'm not going to make any dramatic um, exposure changes even though this image is probably a little bit dark. That is unconventional. Normally you have your exposure locked in and you can go ahead and make your exposure adjustments. I'm gonna go ahead on this image. I've made my white balance adjustments, any tonal adjustments you want to make. You can also use plugins and presets, which is kind of cool. And if you're gonna use plugins that emulate film, um, the only thing I would advise to be careful with is that you go back in after you've applied the preset and turn all the grain off. Off. The reason you want to do that is those film presets will apply the same grain pattern to every image and that does not look natural in the end. In the end you want a very smooth time lapse and the way film actually looks is the grain structure is different on every frame. And so what I will do is I'll use a preset sometimes to emulate a film look but I will go in turn the grain off and then I'll use a plugin in the video editor later and apply the grain there if that's what I want to do. So anyway other than that we're good to go. What you're going to do at this point is hit shift command C on the keyboard and what this does is this brings up the copy settings panel and I pretty much have everything selected. We're going to copy all of those settings. We're going to go back to the library. You want to select all of your images at this point. And once you have them all selected, I would hit shift command V to paste and that will paste your settings across all of the images in the sequence. And now we have a uniform edited sequence that we're ready to export and turn into a video. <music> There's a couple different options you can use to actually stitch this together and make your image sequence a video. And I wanna start with one that is free and is available for both Mac and Windows and it's called MPEG Stream Clip. This is made by a company called Squared5. I'll put the link in the description. When you open up MPEG Stream Clip, and this is actually, if you're working with video at all, this is a really nice little Swiss army knife, uh, at least to do conversions and stuff that you can use. I'm gonna actually use it for the time-lapse sequence and I have a couple time-lapse sequences here. And so what I'm gonna do is, for instance, let's open uh, this one here. I'm gonna select all of my images and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop those onto MPEG Stream Clip and what it's going to do is it's going to take a couple seconds while it sorts the order. The other thing that's really important is when you export your files is make sure that I use the original name as they come off the camera because the software does need to see that as an image sequence and it will put it in the right order. And so once this is done thinking it is done and now I am ready to export my sequence. Now in MPEG Stream Clip you're going to go under the file menu and I'm going to say on the Mac, I would say export to QuickTime. Because I work on the Mac, I tend to do all my video in a codec called ProRes 422. And so what I'm gonna do is go through here, and I'm gonna actually go up here, select Apple ProRes 422. And what I'm gonna need to do is enter a frame rate. And we talked about frame rate in the last video. I'm shooting everything at 23.976, which is the US film standard. If you're shooting for TV, it would be 29.97, and so on and so forth. If you're in Europe, it's 25. Anyway, we're good to go there. I don't need interlace scaling, so I'm gonna deselect that. And uh, then what you're gonna see is some frame size options. Now you can go in here and you can actually resize this to HD or you know 1920 by 1080 or 1280 by 720, depending on what you're doing. What it's gonna do is it's gonna crop in on the footage that you've got, and I don't want it to do that. I would rather do that in post-production, so I will go ahead and export that unscaled. It'll take a minute, depending on how, uh, much resolution you had on your camera, but that's really the way I prefer to do it is do my resizing there because if I need to zoom in or I need to move around or crop or whatever, I want to be able to control that. And that's one of the things that MPEG Stream Clip does not have as a preview window necessarily for that. The only other thing I would recommend, and you can play with this a little bit, when you, right under frame rate, there's an option for frame blending. And if you get, what this does is you know, help things, says provides better motion when changing the frame rate. But in the, in the case of a time lapse, 
what it's going to do. Sometimes if you've got trees in your time lapse or people that are walking around, your footage can be a little bit jerky, especially if you shoot at a high shutter speed. You don't have any of that motion blur going on. You can actually take the frame blending box and what that will do is it'll kind of blend the frames together and it'll give you a little bit of smoother time lapse overall. I tend to experiment on a case-by-case -case basis. If my time lapse is a little choppy, I'll select frame blending and I'll export from there. So that's one thing that you can do. When you're done, you just say make movie and it's going to export a ProRes 422 QuickTime file, which is what I prefer to work in. If you're on Windows, you may have trouble because this is an Apple uh, proprietary Kodak and there are other things you can work in. You can use animation, you can use an AVI file, whatever you want to do from there. Another way to stitch together a time lapse, and this is actually my preferred method because you have a lot more control over it, is to use After Effects. After Effects is part of the Adobe Creative Suite and it is excellent. It does cost money, but you have a lot of control and a lot of options in here. And I'm going to show you how to do this in After Effects. When After Effects opens, what I'm going to do is say create new composition and it will default to the last setup that I had. And you want to make sure this is set up to how you want it. So 1920 by 1080, we'll do an HD time lapse here. Frame rate, I'm going to set to 23.976, say OK, and it's going to set up my composition. The next thing you want to do is import that image sequence. And the way you're going to do that is if I right click in the project pane over here, I'm going to get a little menu, whoops, and I'm going to go down to import, and I'm going to say file, not multiple files. And I know that's a little weird, but we're going to import this as a sequence. So you just want to select file, or it's also Command or Control I. I'm going to go over to my time lapse folder and I'm just going to select the first image, not all of them. And if I look down here on this open pane, it also says, notice how it says JPEG sequence is checked. And so what that's going to do is all I have to do is say this is the first image and it's going to grab all the numerical names after that. Go ahead and say open. And it has now brought in to our project folder that image sequence. Notice it has a little icon for that. The next thing I want to do is you want to right click on this and go down to interpret footage. And I'll show you what this does. If you say main it's going to say basically, okay, I have an image sequence. What is the frame rate? And there's some other options too, but the frame rate is the one we're concerned with. And it defaults to 30 frames a second, which is going to mismatch the time. It'll still work, but what I want to do is I want to set this to 24 frames a second because that's where I'm working right now. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And now I'm ready to add this to our composition. So I'm going to grab the image sequence, drag it down here onto the composition, and we've now inserted it. If you want to scale this, I want to go ahead and hit Hit S on the keyboard and that brings up my scale here. I'm going to lock those in and then you can adjust your scale. You can move this around. Now remember this is the sequence that I did as the sun was coming up. So this is kind of a dark image. So I probably want to drag my playhead across to where the sun comes up and make sure that that's kind of the composition that I like and kind of the framing and cropping there. I'm going to scale it up just a little bit and I'm fairly happy with that. And we are ready to export from here. The only other thing I would recommend is the default is a minute and a half on the composition. So I would drag this small slider over here, the work area end, and I'll just bring that down a little closer to where the actual composition of the time lapse ends. This one does blow out at the end, but I knew it would. Anyway, I'm just going to use part of that in there. Okay, so now we are ready to render this. So what you want to do is go under composition at the top and you want to say add to render queue. This will add it to the render queue and you want to adjust a couple other things. On your output module, make sure this is a codec you want to use. I already have one set up for ProRes 422, but if it's not selected, you can select your format. It's going to be QuickTime. Format options, I'm going to make sure I have ProRes 422 selected. Say OK. And we're going to say OK here. And then you're going to say, where do you want to output it to? And I'll put that on the desktop or a folder where I know where it is. I'll probably rename it. And then once you're done, you go ahead and say render. And it's going to go through the motions. It's going to render out your video file. And it'll make your done noise when it's done. And we now have a video file of our time lapse. <laughs> Another resource that I would direct you guys to if you're interested in learning more about time-lapse photography and getting into some more advanced techniques on this is actually lynda.com. And if you're not familiar with lynda.com, they have, I believe, one of the most extensive training libraries that you're going to find anywhere. And if you go to lynda.com, and I'm just going to search for time-lapse, and let's see what comes up. A bunch of stuff. And they have a number of wonderful online video training on doing time-lapses. And, you know, if you want to get into some more stuff you can do in After Effects, for instance, um, 
they have one on making shadow studies, time-lapse recording basics, creating a time-lapse video. They've got a ton of stuff in here and they've got some more advanced techniques too. Um, there's some great stuff on shooting a time-lapse from a movie, like storytelling techniques. And if you want to get into, you know, electric cranes and stuff that will actually move the camera during the time-lapse, there's some really nice titles on that. Lynda.com are a sponsor of the show and they have a deal right now for Art of Photography viewers where you can actually get 10 days of free unlimited access to the entire website. So if you're interested in learning more about time-lapse video or learning how to do a hyperlapse, I would definitely check Linda out. And if you want to take advantage of the free trial for 10 days, what I would do is go to the following link. It's going to be lynda.com slash AOP. That is Linda with a Y, lynda.com slash AOP. That lets Linda know that I sent you and you're going to get a 10 day free trial and you can check all this stuff out for yourself. And so I want to quickly give another special shout out and thanks to the folks at Linda for once again sponsoring another episode of The Art of Photography. So we've done two videos now on time-lapse photography and I'd be curious to know if you guys would like to see some more on this. Uh, time-lapse is really interesting. It's something that I've done a lot of in the last couple months because I've wanted to use it as a tool to stitch together scenes and stuff that I do in the videos that I do here. And it's really interesting when you get into it that you kind of quickly exhaust your first ideas of time-lapses and then to get into it and really explore the whole idea of with an image to be able to compress time in a video format. And there's a whole art side to that too, which I would be happy to talk about if you guys are interested in that. So make sure you leave me a comment and let me know what you all think. And uh, that's about all I've got today. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please remember to like it and share it with your friends. And as always, subscribe to The Art of Photography. You gotta subscribe. That way you'll always be up to date on all the latest and greatest stuff that we do here. Until the next video, I'll see you later.